G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is the building back up of the tweeter, the 4 ohm scan speak uh, diaphragm voice coil that will be going back into the magnet drive of the tweeter. So I'll reassemble the tweeter and then I will reinstall the tweeter back into the loudspeaker. So enjoy this video. This is uh, episode number three. I think there'll be five episodes in this series. The next one's going to be really, really interesting because I have a special guest that comes down in the room and we do some in-room measurements and we do that with a 4 ohm scan speak tweeter in one side and the 8 ohm original Wilson tweeter in the other speaker and we will do some in-room measurements. You will see everything literally as it happens on the, on the laptop. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, at the end of the, uh, uh, which would be episode four. And then there should be a final episode that will talk about the uh, resistor change that I'm doing in the back of the Wilsons with a higher quality resistor than the one that Wilson supply, which will give us an actual sound improvement with uh, the new tweeters being in place as well. So please like, please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you know anybody that might be interested in this video, by all means share it to them because uh, hopefully they'll get something from this series. The whole reason that I'm doing this is to show you that this can be done and it can be done for substantially less money than what a dealer will charge you to do it. And I'll talk about the prices and everything else in a final wrap up video at the end of it all. So stay tuned, please like and subscribe, enjoy the next video and we'll talk soon. Okay, so the next step to all of this is going to be our new diaphragm. Let me show you the sticker. You'll see that says ScanSpeak. Because all of these drivers are made by ScanSpeak in Denmark. And they are purchased by Wilson and modified by Wilson and used in their loudspeakers. So that is the part number that directly corresponds with this broken tweeter diaphragm voice coil. So let's open this up and have a look at the new voice coil. Ooh. Oops, there we go. All right, okay. So it's got a nice bit of foam here protecting things and a plastic bag it looks like so be very very gentle here if you do this so it's wrapped up in a in a plastic bag here so well, then we just got to get it out of the plastic bag without being very very careful not to damage anything here so just gently gently as you go and here is the new voice coil from ScanSpeak. So as we can see here, this is, if we compare this to this one, which is the Wilson part, obviously the, uh, the, the dome section of the burnt one is clearly obviously different. But other than that, essentially we have the, the identical part. Um, it is, uh, it is a ScanSpeak voice coil diaphragm, nice new copper lugs on it. And, uh, you can see here that, um, the voice coil is firmly attached to the, uh, to the, the silk doped membrane that is the tweeter. Now, the difference here, and we've worked out what the difference is, the, the ScanSpeak diaphragm is a 4 ohm diaphragm. So it, has, it will have a certain amount of windings on the voice coil here that will correspond to a 4 ohm resistance. Now, I can tell you what that is because I've taken a micro picture of that and I've counted every one of those windings around that voice coil and they amount to 10 windings so keep that 10 winding uh, number uh, in your mind this is the Wilson the old one 
Now, physically, this looks wider. This voice coil, this, uh, this, um, voice coil looks wider. So more that way. And in actual fact, it is. When we count the windings on the 8 ohm Wilson diaphragm, we count 14 windings. So we've got 14 on this one. And we've got 10 on this one. I'm not sure if it's easy to see. It may not be so easy to see. But um, but I, I, have, I have taken a micro picture of this and I've counted every one of those windings up. Uh, and I count 14 on the 8 ohm Wilson diaphragm. And I count... 10 windings on the 4 ohm scan speak diaphragm. Now, other than that, this diaphragm is identical to this diaphragm, this, this, this blown up one. They are made by the same company, scan speak. Scan speak would wind a different resistance on their voice coil for Wilson, which is, a, which has a similar, but still a different part number. But, the tweeter itself is also made by ScanSpeak in a four ohm version. The whole tweeter drive, the whole tweeter driver. So clearly, the the eight ohm voice coil plastic arrangement uh, housing here that slides in over the magnet structure for Wilson is eight ohms, and the ScanSpeak replacement is four ohms. So by virtue of that alone, you would think, well, this won't won't work in 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 the Wilson tweeter. Well, uh, I will have other another video coming up that will go into a lot more detail about why this diaphragm will work in the Wilson tweeter, and I have uh, measurements to prove it works. So stay tuned for that because that video will be coming up in a little while as well. So I'll pause the video and get set up here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to install this, this diaphragm into the motor structure of the, um, of the, 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 the tweeter. Okay. So here we have our, our Wilson motor structure with the magnet motor structure. And here we have the replacement voice coil that is four ohms. So remembering that as we pulled this apart, we had a lug of glue here and a lug of glue there, a lump of glue there and there, okay? So as we have a, a, a three pole arrangement here with the threads on it, and then the cutouts on this tweeter, which again is identical to the, to the, to the, uh, the, the blown up tweeter. I'll leave that there so you can see it's there. So what we do is we, place this tweeter very gently over the top and line up those lugs. And then once we've got those lugs lined up, we just gently, gently push this motor structure down on top of the body of the tweeter. And what we have now is something that looks exactly like what we had in the first place without it being blown up. So if we place that back down there again, we put our, our blown up diaphragm aside, and we get the waveguide. So obviously the waveguide has lugs on the back of it as well. So that also helps us to understand that if this is the top of the tweeter, the Wilson riding will be on the bottom. This will sit down without any drama whatsoever directly over the top there like that so then we we get a, a, a those screws that we had and we place a screw and it'll literally it will fall it will fall it will find where it's got to go because of course all this is quite magnetized again now so be very careful that you've got hold of the screw and nothing falls into the uh the diaphragm and then we get our our um t10 star bit now just again making sure that nothing comes out of this this um this screwdriver and we just do these bolts up just just finger tight for starters let's do the next one I find a just just 
to that point where it's finger tight. We spin it around. And we find that one and we do that one back up too. Now they, they'll do up without any dramas at all. So then we just get hold of the of the uh, the tweeter body and just just nip those up ever so tightly, but but over don't overdo anything. Next one. Like that. And then the last one over here. And then essentially what we have is a repaired Wilson tweeter. It's that easy. It really is that easy. Now, remember on the back here, we had our stickers. Let's make it all look original again. We, will, we shall slide this sticker off here and we will place it over the top of the, of the two, the, the plastic housing and the, the body of the tweeter. And then we can just push that down they are quite good quality stickers, so they they can be placed back down there like that. And as you can see, everything looks perfect. And again, we know our little red dot was placed on that side there, which will be the positive terminal of the of the the tweeter. So we pick that, slide that forward, and take that off the the housing we stuck it on. And I'll show it around this way so we can see it. And then we can place that right over the top of the of the 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 barrier between the two parts, the new part and the old part. You can see there that it's right right there. And then so then any technician or anybody coming in to look at this tweeter or whatever the case may be can see exactly as this was before we did anything to it. And that, folks, is a fixed Wilson tweeter. It's that simple. It really is that easy. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do here is we want to put some solder on the uh, tabs of the tweeter. So we want to put some solder here and we want to put some solder over on this other one over here. So by just warming up a bit of solder and you can see that we we tin that beautifully and then we do the same thing over this side and as you can see we are done in regards to that so the next thing we want to do after we've done that is we want to position the tweeter so I've got a box here as you can see and I've put my little screwdriver in there uh, just in here to wedge the tweeter back in position so that it's not resting on anything. That's why we put the towel around the around the, um, the top array so we don't touch anything on the paintwork. And then after we've tinned our wires up, which we have, I'll just try and see if I can set this camera up so that you guys can see what I'm about to do. So we get our, our soldering iron here. We grab that positive white wire um, as best we can here and then we line that up over the top of the tab and then we place some heat on this being very gently gently as we go so we warm that wire up and then that wire will warm up that that material underneath it and then once that's done we just hold that there And what will happen is, is we will have the wire soldered back on. So I'll come around this side and see if I can't show you what I'm doing here on the negative side. Same thing applies again. We warm the wire up and the solder up as best we can here. And then hold in place until for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. And then that wire is reattached back over to there so that we can see we've got a nice connection on there and a nice connection on here. 
and essentially the only thing left to do and we'll do this all on the fly is we can take the screwdriver away here take the box away and then we can sit the tweeter back in the housing like that now I'm not sure maybe I need to spin the camera around a bit here as best I can so you guys can see what's happening and then we get our bolts again and we put our bolts in like this and just just screw screw that one up a little bit and while you've still got the tweeter in place do the opposing one in the bottom like that and just get a few starts on that one and then the tweeter will sit in place so then we haven't damaged any paintwork or or done anything untoward there now let's put this one in place a few turns just to make sure that we've got a nice do these by hand because we do not want to cross threads here and then we'll just get this one started here and then the uh, the bit we're using here is just the, an Allen head uh, it is 532s so we will put that in there and do that one up just again like we did with the others just we're going uh, just gently gently just to seat the tweeter back in in the housing without pushing on anything too hard do this one just so that we get it just just so that it starts to resist and then we stop and move over to the next one so being very careful all the while here because we've got lovely Wilson paint everywhere so once we get to that point there we can just check to make sure that the tweeter and if we need to we just have to turn the screw a little bit just a couple of turns back the other way because I'm a perfectionist and then we'll just seat the tweeter make sure that we've got a nice even gap around the housing and then we can go in and we can just lean on that bolt a little bit more lean on the opposing bolt at the top a little bit more then we can probably take our finger off the our thumb off the tweeter so we've got it centralized in the hole and then we just nip those up so that they're we'll do the opposing one so that they're just firm and tight we don't want to over tighten anything here like that and there we have it the tweeter is in place it's soldered back in we haven't marked a thing everything looks perfect so let's go in and see how it sounds